Welcome to the channel viewers, you're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. We open with prayer for Israel. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the nation of Israel. And we ask you to end this war as quickly and as safely as possible. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs 22:24 is our next saying in our series on the Proverbs. Do not make friends with an angry person and do not associate with hot-tempered people or you may learn their ways and entangle yourself in a, in a snare. The first thing I want to say is there are people in the world that are just hostile. You may not be able to see it on the surface, but one thing's for sure, they're around us and near us and sometimes in our families or associated with people that we're in an intimate relationship with. This is usually the flying monkey element where people want to interfere and they're not happy with you being in the family. The thing about it is, and this is very important, and this goes for people, all people, and this has happened to me, if you hang around this long enough, you become, and it's unresolved, you become like these people. You start to want to push back. And that's not the, the way Christianity works. Um, pushback could mean uh, becoming narcissistic yourself. Uh, having thoughts about the person that you just don't that just aren't in line with Christianity. Not like. So the best thing to do is to set up boundaries. Boundaries around those people. Do not engage. You'll never win when you engage these arguments. Some things that you've got to watch out for are, and these are the dangerous ones, these are the dangerous angry people. These are the ticking time bombs, signs of passive-aggressive behavior. Let's look at some. Resenting or opposing the requests of others, especially authority figures. Procrastinating, delaying, or making intentional mistakes in response to others' requests. You'll get that with communication. Sometimes when you're trying to resolve something in these areas, it just won't happen. Having a cynical, sullen, and hostile attitude. Complaining about feeling unappreciated or cheated. This is flying monkey behavior. You're going to see this in the flying monkeys. If this is in your partner, I'd suggest you leave. Denying anger or hostility verbally, but expressing it indirectly. That's an indirect assault. That's psychological assault. Withdrawing, sulking, or causing others to blow up. And I can only imagine the pressure that was on my last two partners with their flying monkeys in opposition to their relationships. Being overtly cooperative, but covertly uncooperative. On the outside, they're saying, yes, I'm in. But on the inside, they just don't want to be there. Using technology to avoid direct communication. I've done this with breakups, so I'm guilty of that. Making endless excuses and repeating the same behavior over time. It's unchangeable, in other words. We're not to make friends with these people. And I've been in situations where my relationships have started 
and then only to be confronted with people in the family that are co covertly trying to assassinate the relationship, but overtly pretending that everything's all right. And it's horrible. It really is horrible, and it's traumatic. It causes trauma. And you say, how can a person like you get trauma? It's just a natural way in which things work out when things are out of order. The longer the unresolved, this is the problem. And this is a magic, powerful verse. The longer you're around, even psychologically in the vicinity of these people, the more you become troubled by these people. Um, my second wife had a daughter, horrible person, all beautiful and wonderful on the outside, but we described it, or I described it as toxic happiness. It was superficial. Because behind the scenes, she was tearing everything apart that she could get her hands on. She actually was the parent, and my wife was the child, second wife. There was such a bitterness and twistedness that was hidden inside this person. Such an infantile, undeveloped part of this person that the hostility that radiated in the atmosphere around it, the selfishness, the, the horribleness of it, was something that you repulsed away from. You couldn't become like it, it was so bad. And there was just this destruction, this destruction that come with this passive aggressive hatred, deep seated, personality trait. I don't even know how you describe it. It was like a passive aggressive psych psychopath. And this person, to cut a long story short, went into a vendetta. I don't even didn't even know what was going on. This vicious vendetta. And got wind of my business and then went ahead and tried to destroy me in front of this family another family they'll go around trying to defame you undermine you these are flying monkeys family members friends that you run into with these people they're jealous they can't stand you they have to remove you to get their way with the person that you're with because they know you won't tolerate their behavior I remember my second wife asked me if I could sort out this problem that she was having with this person on the internet with other men. And from that point on, me and that girl never got along. I just said, we can't mind your child while you're out running around irresponsibly. And I thought it was unfair on a husband who was a really nice man. We had trouble with him because he was too feminine. He needed to kick this Sheila up the ass and he wouldn't do it. He tried. It was horrible to watch because he was such a gentleman. And when you see these gentlemen end up with these angry, bitter and twisted bullies, it really breaks your heart. I've seen it. I used to mind that little child of theirs for hundreds of hours. And you get no thanks. It's a thankless horrible place to find yourself I've never seen anything like it you'll get family members that just don't like you and they'll get hot tempered with the person that you're with they'll bail them up they'll strangle them, they'll hold them down they'll abuse them, they'll ignore them they'll complain that all of this stuff 
believe it, it's happening behind closed doors. And the best thing for you possibly to do is to let that person go. Because in the end, in my last relationship, when this lady tried pretty hard to keep the peace, you're not going to keep the peace. Apparently the problem was me trying to reconcile myself with them, but I didn't buy into the delusion that was built out of a narcissistic collapse, psychological collapse, relative to jealousy and things associated with that. And the problem wasn't whether they were going to like me anymore. I got to the point where I just did not and would not and will not and could not be bothered with the attitude and mentality and behavior that was coming out of the attitude, the anger, the hot temper associated with those spawns. It destroyed the relationship and that's the purpose of it and you've got to understand a lot of these women will allow that. I did had no interest at all in the end. <clears throat> if people are going to go downhill because their family members got a, someone that's willing to do the right thing by them in their life, that's on them. You just stay on point. Do not engage. Do not entertain the fantasy. Do not do not entertain the delusion. And if the person that you're with struggling with it, that's a weak person and you're going to get in trouble. In the end, I said, no, I will not be entangled in this snare. It's a snare. It's a trap. They want you to engage so that they can bring you down. <clears throat> through the problem they want to bring you down they want you to go down they want to entangle you in their delusion and then they'll pull you down but you want to be like this in Psalm 1 7 we have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler these flying monkeys are fowlers Okay, they're trying to foul you up and destroy the relationship with you entangled in their fantasy. It's, it's so bent and twisted and evil and dark. But you escape like a bird from this fowler's snare, from this flying monkey's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Now, some of you right now might be in this situation. We're going to make a proclamation together and hopefully this will contribute to you psychologically being freed from this fowler's snare, this flying monkey's snare, this interferer's snare and break you out of the triangulation. Say after me, I have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has broken, and I have escaped. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll do another version, and then I'll close. The NASB, the NASB version of 1995. You say after me, my soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken and I have escaped. Amen. Amen. You've escaped. You've escaped. You've, you've confessed it in the spiritual realm and that will go forth and protect you psychologically. That's the power of confession. I have escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and I have escaped. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Do not engage the flying monkeys.
stay integral, stay moral, and stay free. You have escaped out of the snare of the fowler. In Jesus' name, amen.